The fastest way to shop with Jewelry Maker is by going to our website. Just click on the sign up button. Once you've filled in the required details, you can start shopping. You can watch the show by clicking the Watch Live button on the front page. You can also use our Refine tool and narrow down your search. Once you've found an item that you like, just simply click on the Buy Now button and the item will be added to your basket. Don't forget you can add as many items to your basket per day and still only pay one p and Enjoy shopping with Jewelry Maker. If you love classic jewellery, then why not come and join guest designer Gemma Crow on our vintage workshop. Gemma will guide you through various beading and wirework techniques, which will inspire you to create timeless designs from a bygone era. The full course includes a selection of wire, a selection of findings and charms, a bead scoop, use of all relevant tools and equipment, a buffet lunch and refreshments, a tour of the studio and a visit to our Gemstone Museum. All of this for just $69.95. Have a blast from the past and take home some amazing designs. For further information, contact our call centre on 0800 644 655. Jewelry Maker ships to the following countries. We offer two delivery services, standard and premium. So wherever you are in the world, Jewelry Maker are never far away. When shopping with Jewelry Maker, you can add as many items to your order in one day and only pay one postage and packaging charge. We have two delivery options. Standard delivery at just £2.95 and you'll receive your parcel within four to six days. Or opt for our premium delivery at just £4.95 and you'll receive your parcel within three to four days. Happy shopping with Jewelry Maker. Welcome back to Designer Inspiration. Have you recovered from that amazing song? Neon Appetite? Got a text. <laughs> Don't know why they need to recover, to be honest. Don't know why they need to recover, to be honest, he's just saying. <laughs> Karen, message for Ben. That was great. You have made my day. I'm still smiling. Yes, Karen. Yes, Karen! Yes! I am going to, when I get in, watch that back time and time again on our YouTube channel. Because in that whole break, I really wanted to brew, but there was no water, and I spent half of my time wiping mascara from my face because my eyes were just streaming with laughter. Thank you very much for that, Ben. So, I have got for you now our lovely guest designer today. It is the wonderful Teresa. And she is going to be making some really nice copper feeling designs. Why have you put all this together? Um, well, uh, my original idea was um, the, the twisted sort of cage uh, pendant. Um, so that was uh, where it kind of started from. Um, I really wanted the, the copper um, just to have a bit of a classy feel. And then um, obviously the Amazonite works so well with, um, with having the, the copper for that kind of classy look. And it does, doesn't it? I would, I'm just one of those people, I think, who, when I see blue, I would always think silver. But using it with this, it brings a whole different depth, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. So you've got today 0.4 and 0.8, 10 meters of each. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my voice then. Uh, you also have the copper findings pack as well. Now, I don't know if you've got the copper findings pack recently, but if I can just show you, the it's a relatively new one and the copper itself actually matches the copper wire. I know in the past we've done copper findings pack, but the copper has been slightly off, it's not look, looked the same. But if I can show you just one of the clasps you'll get in the findings kit next to the wire, you can see it's the same colour, can't you? It never used to be, did it? But you are getting that in your bundle today. In the findings pack, you're gonna be getting loads of goodies, everything that you can see on screen, including the balls. 
20 carats worth. No, 20 of these. No, that's more than 20 in here. How many am I getting in here? Lowwoods. I'm not going to count them for the next hour, producer Pip, <laughs> no. You've got, these are your rose gold. And you've got in here, you get 20 of the crimp beads in here. 980. 980. Whoever's counting these is very patient. You're getting absolutely loads. And these are your spacer beads. 980 of these there is. You've also got two strands. Gorgeous Labradorite. With, which is this wonderful rectangular shape. The facets on these really create this labradorescence. Let me see if I can find another one. Because the light's in here again today. Isn't that really beautiful quality? Mmm. And I love how it works with the facets on this actually. Because it just highlights them, doesn't it? Can, you can even see the blue from there. That's mad. And speaking of blue, how about a little bit of your Amazonite? So you've got 240 carats worth of these huge Amazonite faceted long rice beads, 31 by 10 mil. You've also got on here the Labradorite, which is 120 carats worth of these faceted rectangles. These are 12 by 8 mil for you today. JL. GC93. If you type in that code, you're going to get a discount today. All together for this findings, for the 980 beads, the 0.4 and the 0.8, 240 carats of your Amazonite and the 120 carats of your Labradorite, you should pay £40.70. But we're going to give you, of course, a designer inspiration discount. Your price is just £24.95 for 290 of these beads, which I've got to admit we saw before. The way you've used them is something really unusual. I love it. Two strands, your findings pack, 20 metres of wire. You save it all together, £15. 75 pence in total 15 pounds and 75 pence you're going to be saving it's not often you get to say oh i've made over 15 pounds saving is it if you split it into sections so the gemstones the balls and the findings and the wire that'd be eight pounds 31 per per bit so 831 for the two wires 831 for 290 beads with the finding 281 for the gemstones. It's fab. £24.95. Here's your price today. And we've got a really nice feel to this. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. We give you a little sneaky peek of one of the designs. And that's the design we're going to be looking at mainly today, isn't it? Um, yes, yeah, I'll see if I can um, talk through um, the, the main points of the, the second one as well. Because um, that was kind of where, where, the, um, where the design sort of started. Um, the one I'll show first is where it ended up, but I think it's worth um, going through that one just because it was something so different for me to do as well. Yeah. This is the piece we're going to be looking at focusing on most. And then the one next to it is the one that we will also be discussing. It's almost got a Fabergé feel to it, I think. Yeah. Was that intentional? Um, it, it wasn't, actually. The, um, the whole idea of the twist, um, the twist cage came from somewhere completely off the wall. Um, actually, I was watching um, MasterChef Australia, um, where one of the contestants was making this tart um, and she'd obviously done something with a pear. We saw her cutting the pear. Um, and then I think had kind of, um, poached the pear um, but it sat on the tart and basically it was sort of pear shaped um, until she sort of pushed it and twisted it and then it just sort of folded into all of these twists that's fab it was gorgeous it was just like one moment it just sort of went and it's, 
absolutely lovely. I thought, I've oh. got to do something twisted. Um, so yeah, it was a pair that um, and you most inspired it. <laughs> Get inspiration for very strange places well, sometimes. Well, yeah, I like that though. <laughs> That's the fun part of it. So whereabouts are we going to be starting with this design? I'm going to start with the copper beads, um, mainly because um, I'm going to see how, how far I can struggle through a POT stitch. Um, I mean, when I first sort of thought about this, I had thought about putting some small beads in with the, um, the twisted cage pendant, um, but I hadn't really gotten much further than that. I got them and it's just like, oh, I've got all these beads, I've got to do so, and I did make a bit of a challenge to use all of the beads, which I failed because this is actually still what's left from mm -hmm. um, my first starting. Wow. Having done what's in, um, what's made up, um, and the staging um, for for this piece as well. Wow! Um, so still add. Um, it's still going. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> now I have got S long coming up for you in a little bit, which is what we're working with here today, isn't um, it? Yes, yeah. It's just um, well, this this is actually a little bit of um, thread I've got in my stash, um, but yeah, the, the S long is exactly the same sort of stuff. Um, and um, I've had kittens with this beading needle as well. I keep losing it, so I have found it again. Um, it is the proper beading needle. Um, but uh, yeah, so I thought I'll do this bit before I lose it again. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, so in order to start, what I've done, I mean, um, I'm, I'm not um, a, uh, a seed bead sort of um, user, I'm not a bead uh, weaver um, in, in any sort of, you know, normal sense. Um, so this is kind of a, a new thing for me. I've done it a few times before, um, but I had to kind of, okay, what exactly am I doing? Um, and I find actually when you start, the tension's the most difficult thing to kind mm. of get. Once you've got something there to hold on to, um, you're better off. So I had a little bit of a cheat. Um, I've put um, a slip knot in the end. I've put the bead on and a slip knot in the end. Okay. Um, and then I work one bit and then take this out and carry on again from the other side. Okay. Um, so you haven't got one bit that's a, a weird bit of tension. Okay. If it all goes awry for the first three rows, few rows you can actually take those out and start again from them once you've got something to hold rather on than to. yeah rather than having a proper knot and then you can't really do anything with it um, but uh, yeah I mean I did sort of think about using monofilament but this is just going to get too too fiddly really um, better off to use the the, the thread and, and, um, and needle um, so what I've got on here apart from the stopper bead which is only just there to, to stop things moving around um, I've actually got 10 beads on here um, the the piece on there is 12 um, but that the, um, the sample piece that I was doing was, was 10. <clears throat> Basically, it's just however many columns you want um, going down. Thread that number of beads on, um, and then your next row, um, you want to pick up a bead. Um, I haven't got the, I couldn't find the proper beading mat either, so I should probably chase these around a little bit. Um, pick up one bead, and then m skip um, one of the, uh, the, the last bead. Um, and go through the second to last, back through. Um, so you're sort of starting the, um, the well actually it's the third row because that, that's the, the second row. Um, and what you're trying to do is get the two, the two last beads um, to sit above each other, um, something a bit like that. Okay. Um, but preferably a bit closer to the others. Um, so I should just keep kind of pulling on that. I say this bit's the bit that's a little bit kind of fiddly to start with. Um, you will find the, the tension kind of comes, but um, it, it doesn't like to sort of sit there to start with. Once you have started, what you can do is kind of pull it through um, from the end Ooh. and then back on itself. So if that one's kind of tight, then we can get that through. Um, and then we are Picking up another bead, Ooh. I might end up actually putting them on by hand. Um, and we've just been through, um, just trying to <laughs> figure out how best to show it. Um, there we go. We've just been through uh, this bead here. Um, so we're skipping over the next one and going through the one after that. Oh, if I can actually get it through, it's because I'm not holding it properly. If I hold it properly, you won't see anything, which is not very useful um, and you just carry on along the row um, like that so you've actually got if I just kind of bunch them up there sort of sitting a bit strangely at the moment um, but you've got sort of a row of uh, a bit of two two one two one and then onwards I see. Um, 
and you just basically carry on like that um, for as long as you you want as I say um, I would do a few rows then you've got something to kind of hold on to um, and then come back and do the other side uh, I'm going to um, talk you through what I did um, on the uh, on the end pieces okay. um, so you kind of said that you were, didn't do this with uh, monofilament. Why have you gone for this thread for the S-Lump? Um, well, I, mean, I, I think um, in terms of uh, the holes in the holes in the beads are quite small. Mm. Um, in terms of the holes, um, I don't think, you, well, I did try um, getting some uh, of the beading thread through um, for the, the bracelet, actually, and it won't go through twice. So monofilament would be the only thing that would go through um, twice. But when you come to kind of finishing it off, um, OK, it's, it's clear, so you won't see the knot. Um, but with this beading thread, you can finish where you want it to, and you can actually kind of pull um, the knot through into, um, into the beads, so it all kind of hides everything. I see. Um, at, at the end of it. And it's strong as well, yeah. Estelon, isn't it? It has a lot of strength to it. If you are interested in Soutache, or maybe you need to stock up or maybe you want to have a go this is the thread for it yeah. isn't it it's got the strength there it's got the malleability it's movable it's easy to use but as you said once it locks it sort of locks yeah well it is um, slightly sort of waxed so mm. it, it will sort of grip onto itself um, so yeah it's it's exactly the job that it's in, intended for so yeah. um, it, it does it does the job perfectly yeah. Yeah. So you've got two of the Eslon in black, you've got one in the white, you've also got six of your, no you haven't, you've got eight actually of the needles as well. Now these are Soutash beading needles, they're a size 10, but as you'll be able to see we're using them for this, it's not just for Soutash. You've got two of the black, one of the white. You've got eight needles in total, size 10. It's gonna be a sellout, so you've gotta be quick. Your price? Five pounds 50 for all of this today. What do you think of that price for eight needles and this much Eslam? It, it is a brilliant price. Um, as I say, what um, I've found as well um, is, for some obscure reason, I put the needle down and then it's not there when I go back to it it wasn't where I left it yep. um, they're very easy to um, to just kind of mislay as I won't lose I won't say lose because I have, did find it again um, but to mislay so always handy to have more um, and actually the same with the thread you can pop it somewhere you think you know you think you know where you're putting it um, and then suddenly you can't find it again so it's always useful to have uh, have more than one one reel um, but uh, yeah I think I had a look um, in one of the shops um, and uh, the reels of thread that they were um, selling was uh, £2.30, I think, a reel. Mm. So essentially, that would be sort of £4.60, £5, £6. Sold out. Mm. Two minutes that was on for. <laughs> Told you. I did give you a heads up. Do not fear, I've got loads of other bargains. It's got to be about the fifth or sixth things I've sold out of today. You need to be quick today. I did give you a heads up. Coming back on your screen will be the kit for this, which included, do not forget, the findings pack, 980 beads, the wonderful rice beads of the Aku Amazonites, and the Labradorite as well, 120 carats worth. This is going in the same direction of all the others. It's going to be a sellout. JLGC93, get yourself on the phone quickly, please. Okay, fab. So, right, we've started them together. Talk us through exactly what you finished. Yeah, it I'll, off I'll with. talk you through it. Um, I think if I if I do any of this again, what <laughs> I'll do is find out some bigger beads, um, so I can kind of show you what I'm doing on, on a larger scale. It's so small, I don't think you'll see much if I if I um, if I carry on. Um, but as you can see, this is the top um, of my uh, of my piece, um, and you can actually see. Um, where the rows are sort of um, coming up and down. Obviously, the, the topmost sort of five are the, um, are the last row. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom, I wanted to come to a point. Um, and so it's just a little bit difficult to get your thread going in the right sort of direction. Um, so if I can kind of figure out where I was at, actually, if I show you that side. Um, so obviously, on this row, um, on ooh, this row here, um, I'd come out of the, the bead below, um, gone through this one to put this one on and come out um, 
this side of that yeah. one. And actually what I want to be doing now um, is um, putting the, this next bead on, um, coming through this one. Um, so what you actually need to do is just kind of find your path round. Um, I came out of this, um, the, the is it right most um, bead? Um, mm -hmm. And then down into this one, down again, um, and down a third time, up um, one of the kind of the struts, um, and then diagonally up two, oh, not quite sure where I'm at, um, and then up um, again vertically. Um, so you're actually then taking the needle through um, the bead you want to be coming through in the right direction. Um, it's a bit, as I say, it's, it's complicated to show. It's probably just as complicated to kind of point at, really. <laughs> um, everything is a little bit small. Um, but if anybody wants any kind of further instructions on um, how to kind of get to, to that sort of stage, um, I can put some stuff on um, my uh, Facebook page. Um, and how do people find that? Um, it's Teresa Kennard Designer. Um, once I get home, I'll um, post something on the Jewelry Maker page as well, so you can just kind of click on my name and, and find me. Um, fab. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, one thing to say, with um, with POT, I did actually do a little bit of reading up on all of this. Yeah. Um, you can do a weave. The, the easiest weave to start with is an even um, <coughs> Ooh, even sorry, number. Nowhere. Um, even number of beads. So I've got ten on on here. Um, you can do it with an odd number of beads, but again, at the end of a row, you have to kind of work your way around to get the right sort of to get into the right direction again. Perfectly possible to do. Um, with an even count, you'll find the point, as mine is, um, is slightly off centre because obviously you've, you need, you're going to have six one side and um, five the other yes. um, to get to that point. Um, with an odd weave, you will have a centre point. So if it really matters to you, yeah. um, you'll need to have an odd weave. Um, okay. I kind of figured, since this is my first um, for quite a while, um, I thought I'll start with the easy version rather than completely tying myself up, probably quite literally in knots. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how you kind of um, go through it. Um, and in order to finish off, I should have left a tail on here just to, to show you, um, but I just kind of took the, the thread through a couple of the beads, um, picked up one of the stitches, I don't know whether you'll be able to kind of see if I put the, the needle through one, yeah. um, pick up one of the stitches in between, mm. um, tied a knot kind of around that, um, and then took the needle through um, a few more beads, pulled to get the knot actually to go into the bead rather than sitting. So it's hidden. So it all kind of hides itself in oh. the end. Um, and then that's the, the, the sort of the finished piece um, in order to make it, as I say, this one's 10, because um, I was just trying to figure out what size I wanted really. Um, and I just made it a little bit wider with the 12 and a little bit longer just to kind of increase the size. Mm. Um, so you can kind of have whatever size you want. You could make quite a thin sort of long piece as well. So to create this, how many beads are we talking about? Was that, would that be 10? 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. Well, no, it puts half actually, is that? Oh, yeah. Because so actually, you're only putting five beads on each time. On. So, so each about, row is five. So about, so about hundred if that. Hundred if that. It must be less 70, than that. Seventy, eighty actually. Because yeah. if I got to hundred and part way down, about yeah. seventy or eighty, and you're getting nine hundred and eighty. That's a massive amount, isn't it? And yeah. it's such a dramatic effect, I think. Yeah. Well, what I really want, I mean, it was partly because of the way they were kind of sitting in the packet. I just thought, I really want to make a kind of a sheet of them yeah. to be able to lay something on. Um, and um, I did think about um, using the bead loom, which could do. Um, mm. Obviously, it'd have a different effect because each of the rows would, it, it's like kind of square, whereas this is hexagonal, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I just decided to make things even more difficult without myself. Yeah, of um, <laughs> I think the loom would have been quicker, actually. Um, but it's always kind of handy to, to do a little bit of um, like something nice new. Do, yeah, do something yeah. a bit different. And actually, I, I thought for saying, I, mean, I haven't had much time to kind of um, sort these bits and pieces out. Um, I thought it'd be quite a stress thing. It's like, what am I taking on? Um, it's really relaxing. It's actually a really nice thing to do to, to zone out um, mm. and, and actually be um, have a bit be, of me time. Yeah, yeah, it is just a really relaxing thing to do, M more so than I thought it would be, um, mm. definitely. So, yeah, always worth a try. Um, so, we've got our kind of base. Okay. Um, and my neck, I'm just, <laughs> just wondering where to put my needle now so I don't, don't lose, lose it. it. Pop it on the back. Right, right. through your guys' um, back. <laughs> remember where I put it. Um, right. So, the next sort of question, I suppose, the next um, issue is how precisely I'm going to attach that um, to a necklace. What am I going to do in order to um, 
be able to put it as like a pendant piece on the necklace. So um, being sort of, you know, knowing a bit about wire, I thought that's probably the, the easiest thing to do. And I've got some wire. Um, I shall see what I can do in terms of kind of putting it on with the wire. Um, first thought I had was actually to roll the sheet around and then kind of sew it back through itself so you've got that kind of roll at the top yeah um, but I thought actually that takes up a lot it's a bit bulkier than I wanted okay um, so I will do something else instead um, so I took a couple of pieces of the um, the point eight wire and I did have uh, a length um, of the uh, the point four um, and what I'm trying to do is basically stitch on um, my sheet of beads um, to the wire. So starting on um, my normal sort of uh, route, leave a bit of a tail because I was kind of using that for, for other purposes later. Um, just did a couple of wraps around that, um, that first wire. Um, and then what I wanted to do um, was just get through, I think, I just can I just double check I didn't put the other one on first. Oh, I did as well. Um, <laughs> good job I checked. Good job. Um, so I've got two pieces of wire at the top. Um, so I've just wrapped um, one. It is a little bit longer. Um, wrapped one once, um, once or twice round, um, and then popped <laughs> the uh, the the second one sort of on top of it, um, and just gone round that once, um, and then back around the bottom one once. Um, so we've got that um, sort of shape. Um, then pick up my, um, my sheet um, and take the wire through the first bead. Now I didn't have any problem getting the wire through um, any of the beads that have already got thread through. No. Um, I was just wondering if that one was going to be the exception to the rule then, but it wasn't. That's fine. Because they've got large holes in. Yeah, yeah, the they're, size. They're, they're bigger. They're bigger than you think. Mm. Um, as I say, I couldn't. Well, some of them I did actually manage to get beading thread through um, twice, mm -hmm. um, but most of them I, I couldn't. So that was why I just didn't want to sort of spend time kind of trying to pick them up. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've threaded that one on. Then I'm just going to wrap um, around um, the bottom. Oh, it's, bending in the, in the warmth of the studio here. Um, wrap round um, the bottom one once, over um, the top one once, and then round the bottom one um, again. And then um, that's just sort of filled in the gap, really, um, between the two beads. Um, and so then I'm just going to go through the next bead again. And you just carry on like that along the, the whole top of the sheet. Just want to let you know that I've got 11 of these in baskets, 11. I won't name and shame, but you need to check out, please. I've got about 15-ish in total, ish, and 11 of you with it in baskets, Helen, etc. Please check out because I don't want you to miss out. We've already had loads of sellouts, and sometimes people. What happens when we do designer inspiration is, when I first bring it to you, we get loads of people buying, and then people sit and watch, and then afterwards, when people see, oh yeah, I can do that, then people buy more at the end of the demo. The thing is, half an hour left, and I've not got as many as you will want on there. So please, people with it in your baskets, do click to check out now otherwise you might miss. So I'm just trying to kind of... Um, I had a few texts asking about my opal, saying if people missed it. Yeah, you have. Where have you been? You've <laughs> missed opal. You probably missed Ben singing about me on appetite. <laughs> You've missed a, a whole designer inspiration. And you have missed the opal. But I will recap it for you because it's beautiful. And I have got a handful left. I love that opal. It made me very, it's such a gorgeous strand, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is lovely. Um, so I apologise, I just want to kind of get to the end of this so I can show you kind of the finishing off. No, no, carry um, on. But the more you, you try and rush, the more fiddly it gets. 
I'll, I'll fill. <laughs> now, if you do want to get in touch, um, do you feel free to? Any questions you might have for the lovely Teresa? She is with us till five, even though you've been here from silly o'clock this morning, filming. Okay. Oh, it's all right. Filming. Hmm. Might be a piece of DVD. Secret, um, secret, secret squirrel. <laughs> but I've also spent a really nice morning on with um, all the well, the ladies Sunday and gentlemen um, in the Sunday experience. Steve, as well, so, yes. Steve made some gorgeous pieces. Yeah. Nice chunky jewelry. Um, so she is with us till five. Messages in. Any questions could be to do with this, could be to do with jewelry making in general. 60 triple seven JM Studio. Pip would like me to bring in this Labradorite for you, so a better ad. You've got here your wonderful wheelless. You've also got your faceted rounds. These are really pretty strands. Lengthy as well, this one, isn't it? It is. Wow. Just gets longer. Mm. <laughs> He's about 40 centimetres. Oh, well, it says 32 over there. I would suggest that is longer than 32, wouldn't you? It looks Let me get my trusty me. ruler. I don't trust a slide. Here we go, trusty ruler. Yeah. 30 centimetre ruler. Look. About 35, 35, 36, 37. You've got the wheels. It'll be Labradorite on the night. <laughs> <laughs> I might have named that. A um, hundred carats of, of this. You've got your faceted rounds. These are four mil, 17 centimeter strand, 20 carats, 80 carats of the wheels. Your price today is just Eight pounds on the nose for two strands. Let's look at the quality as well, shall we? I'll just show you the wheels one at the moment. How much do you think of that price? That's just nuts, isn't it? They are absolutely look, gorgeous. When you they? look at it to eye yeah. as well. Yeah. There's so much blue flashing up off of that. It's mm. unbelievable. Mm, isn't it? And you've got the four mil faceted rounds as well. Get your hands on it now. Eight pounds for you. Right, so I think I'm just about there so I can kind of show you um, where we've gotten to on that. I think that's now actually the front. Um, so it doesn't really make much difference which way you want to go, go about it, is the, um, which is the front and which is the back. Um, although this is a little bit locked up. Because um, I was rushing um, one of the wires, I did kind of bend out of shape a little bit, but um, either kind of take it out, straighten it a little bit and then push it back in again, or just be a bit more careful, take, it, take your time on it. Um, so I've just woven through each of those five topmost beads um, and uh, wound it um, around the, the, the two uh, um, 0.8 mil bits of wire. Um, the topmost bit of wire um, is the one um, I'm going to use to actually attach onto the uh, the necklace. Um, so I think all I did with that um, was uh, chop off um, to a, a reasonable length both sides um, and then just turn a, oh, it will move until you're finished kind of turning the loops so it doesn't actually matter where you turn that first loop um, and just sort of shuffle it along and um, chop the other side and oh, I've made that really short then. Um, it had moved again. Um, and just turn another loop uh, that side. Um, and if you can just get them touching where um, the, the wire is wrapped, then it won't move about. Um, so that's actually the, the top one. Um, and then the bottom wire um, and the, the, the ends of the, the 0.4 um, are what you're going to be using to kind of put the design onto um, the, the sheet. Um, I knew I wanted to put a uh, Labradorite. Um, on there. Um, the rest of it I wasn't quite sure about so I was just kind of playing around with the wire really. Um, the, obviously I've um, just started just kind of um, uh, wrapping around um, a little coil um, on that side so um, what I can then do with that is just bend it around, um, get it so it's sort of over the sheet um, and then um, what you can do is um, poke that, uh, the, the wrapping wire, the 0.4 wire, um, through uh, one of the 
the holes between the beads um, and that is what's sort of helping to then lock it in place and it depends how um, neat you want to make the back um, you can just sort of you know carefully weave the um, the point four wire or you can just move it straight to where you want if you don't wor want to worry about it obviously it's all the same color um, so it does matching quite well anyway um, but um, I think what I did with this one um, is a little sort of loop there um, to take it downwards I can't remember where I where I ended up putting it onto the um, the actual sort of gemstone, yeah, sort of around there. Um, and then um, the Labradorite did fit on the point eight, it does fit on the point eight. Um, so I popped one um, onto that wire, um, and then, um, so I can't remember what I did above, um, another loop um, at the bottom. Um, and then as I get down that far, um, I can just kind of um, stitch the point four through somewhere um, around that loop to hold it okay. in place so you can do that wherever you sort of feel like it as you go um, probably the, the other notable thing that I, I did um, on this one is just um, took the the wire through I can't actually get it through the right sort of spot um, but somewhere kind of close to um, where the uh, the Labradorite is I haven't really put that in the right sort of spot just to hold it at the bottom there um, and popped on um, some more of the copper beads so that they kind of sit down the side mm. again it all kind of blends in but it starts to trick your eye um, as to whether the labradorite sitting on top of them or if it's in it or where precisely the the depth actually is um, so uh, yeah so just kind of carry on obviously with this one um, you can uh, wind that round and sort of um, make a bit of a, a twiddle with that it's it's a little bit difficult to kind of see on screen it's usually when the the lights just just kind of catches that wire um, that you can actually see where it is um, but you can just make a little bit of a, um, a, a flourish on there um, to, to complete that piece And then I guess we ought to move on to the, the wrapped stones. Um, and I yeah, I think if I start with the, the single one, um, then I can show you kind of the basic wrap and yeah. I'll show you what to do um, for the caged one as well. Okay. Um, so you've got 34, 33 of the, it'll be Labradorite on the night. These two strands started off with over 100. Over a hundred. Over a hundred. <laughs> lordy, lordy. 33, uh, 32 now left. Both of these today. Just eight pounds and I, eight pounds on the nose. Go okay, last you can. Right, so for this one, another two pieces. There seems to be a bit of a theme. Another two pieces of the point eight. Um, these are about 20 centimetres. They're probably a bit longer than you need, but um, we'll go with that anyway. Um, and a, a bit of the point four. Skipping forward a little bit, um, one of these bits of point eight um, is going to go through um, one of the Amazonites. Okay. So um, you need to leave enough of a tail to be able to do that, basically. Um, and this wrap, um, if I start on one, um, it's going to be five wraps around one wire. Um, put in the second wire and then it's one wrap around the second wire. Um, and then another five around just the first wire. Um, so actually you just kind of get um, one wire that is totally wrapped and one wire that's quite bare. It's, it's enough to hook it in um, but it's quite sort of um, bare so you've got again the light sort of shining off of it so if I show you where I'm to there it is actually quite quick obviously you need to try and sort of keep it um, as tight as possible um, but uh, that's sort of the the pattern that I'm going for um, and I just did it to you know a length that I thought was about right which actually for me um, with tight wraps turns out to be 14 um, of the bits on the barest wire. Like 14 juts up. Yeah. 
it's easier to count them than, <laughs> than all the little ones. Um, <laughs> don't recommend counting all of the little ones. Um, actually, it's quite an easy one to count as well because you're not going through between the two wires. You're not kind of forgetting where you're, you're at. Um, so it is actually one over, one, two, three, four, five, one over, one, two. So it is really quite simple to sort of do and quite quick to do actually as well. Um, so I've got uh, three wraps, I think, just sort of holding it on the end and then that's my, my 14. Um, you can do, well, a few more wraps um, on, on the end if you want to. Um, but uh, it's worth leaving a tail and then you can kind of add that in if it just needs to be in the right sort of spot, I suppose. Um, then with the longest um, end of the, the piece that um, is barest, um, just to help kind of lock it in really. Um, I'm popping that, uh, I'm popping the bead on that one, on that end. Um, oh, if it will go through, which I shouldn't have any problems with, but um, so my hands are getting warm. Oh, there we go. Um, and then if you just kind of ease it um, around, just so that's kind of sitting on the stone. Um, and then you can decide which way you want to kind of it to twist. Um, Obviously, at the moment, um, the uh, sorry, I can see it. Nobody else can. Um, <laughs> the the barest wire is kind of the the bottom most, so it just depends which way you want to kind of twist it. Um, all I would do, just to kind of help, kind of lock it in at the moment, um, is um, bend the wire that's coming through the stone, um, and then your your stone's not doing anything. Um, and then if you ha hang on to the the wire one end and the other. Um, then you can actually just twist your hands one way and then the other to get that um, twist on it. You can make it as tight as you want um, or as loose as you want. Because you haven't finished anything off this end, if you find you're going round and you've kind of not um, got wraps of wire anymore, um, you can obviously do a bit more um, wrapping on the wire. Um, and then all we need to do is worry about finishing it off. Um, so the um, end that's just got one wire coming out of it. Um, just want to kind of bend that over. Um, I will snip it off. Normally I'd just kind of make the loop and then chop it where I wanted to. Um, but just for, for time, I'll just make a loop that end. Um, make sure it sort of hooks in. Um, and at this point as well, you might find it's a little, the, um, the wire going through is a little bit loose, so you can kind of pull that a little bit further again. Um, and so you've got kind of the loop one end. It's sitting a bit strange at the moment, um, but you can kind of sort that out afterwards. Um, that's where it's sort of just a little bit down. Um, I want it to be sort of central. Mm. Um, with the other end, obviously you've got um, three wires, not worrying about the wrapping wire, I'll just ch chop that off when I, I want to. Um, so it's just de de depending what you want to do with those. Um, I'm just going to take um, the innermost one, um, so if I can just get that wrapping wire out of the way, um, the innermost one on there um, and take it around the wire coming out of the stone and because that one is locking it all in place then I might just take it around again for a bit of a flourish. Um, then I'll take this one and wrap it round the other way. I can just sort of sit that in so it's a bit tight. Um, so that one's coming round sort of that way. Um, and then just because I want to kind of um, finish off over that one um, I'm just going to chop that off um, and then my final wire um, I'm just going to take over the top of that one in a bit of a spiral there um, and I mean you can kind of do it wherever you um, you want it to, to sit um, whatever kind of pattern you want just chop those two off Ooh. and just tuck them in a bit better so that's kind of the, the pattern that I've got chop that one off now as well and that and once you've gotten to that stage you've kind of um, oh I'll tell you what I didn't do I'm, I'm, I've just done the earring <laughs> I just used all of the the, um, the wires wow. for the earring um, if you're not doing um, an earring you can use one of them preferably the one coming out of the um, do it as the a stone, um, which I can't do because I've chopped that off quite close, um, as the uh, as the other connector. So that's the the piece that you've got then, um, connecting it all at the end. 
So that is the connector. I just want to let you know the Labradorite that's on the bottom of the screen, it's gone to the bottom of the screen because I've got single figures left. I've got eight left and there's about 15, 16 in baskets. This is fastest finger first. It's going to be a sellout. If I've got eight, how many in baskets? There's nine people are going to miss out. Nine people are going to miss out on this. Another person's just come on online. Please be quick. Okay, final piece. <laughs> final piece. Yes. Um, I haven't got many stages. I have to I have to fess up. Um, I ran out of time to do all the stages. I haven't got many stages for this. I've got as far as I can. Um, okay, so I kind worry. of talk you through um, most of it. Um, the wrap is exactly the same um, as the um, single twist around the, the Amazonite. Um, so each of the struts, if you like, um, is, is, um, is wrapped in the same manner um, but what I wanted was four of them um, coming out so basically what I've done um, on here started off with two wires um, did my 14 wraps um, like um, this strut here um, like that one that excellent um, and then um, actually I started off started off with about 80 centimeters I think of the the wrapping wire um, and start in the middle of that um, to do those wraps um, middle of the, the main wires and middle of, of the, um, the the wrapping wire um, and then come back to where you started from um, bend um, one of your wires out 90 degrees um, and then do um, introduce another piece of wire and wrap that um, and then do the same again um, on the other side um, so you've got two pieces of wrapping wire actually that you've, you've been doing um, this one's sort of part part way along wrapping um, and once you've kind of bent um, bent it out I've bent the the one that's that's sort of the, the main wrapping wire um, but because I wanted um, each side to be the barest wire um, I'm basically sort of switching over once I get to that that corner um, the the wire that's bent this way was the one that was mostly wrapped is now going to be the barest one so I'll go over um, with one of my um, my double wraps um, and then I shall start wrapping the top one um, with your five wraps it's a bit fiddly um, from here um, and then just carry on like that Ooh. to get all of the um, all of the four um, with your 14 um, wraps on it um, and then you can just sort of um, make sure that's as, as tight as you can make it in in the middle there because that's where the gemstone is going to be coming through um, now the other thing that I I think I possibly won't be able to replicate <laughs> um, ever again. Um, but the bottom, um, actually I could, but it just takes a little bit of, of, of fiddling about because some of the copper beads um, will take the four mil wire twice, the 0.4 mil wire twice. Um, and therefore that is a little beady bead made out of um, the little copper beads and the um, 0.4 wire. Um, and then I just use the two bits of the 0.4 wire to wrap onto that cage. Actually, where you've got two bits of bare wire in the corners, um, I just used it to, to wrap there, just to keep it sort of there. Mm -hmm. um, and popped a, um, one of the head pins, the ball head pins, um, through, um, which I need to find somewhere. Um, I haven't got any out. Uh, that's them. And uh, yeah, so just pop that through, um, which is there, to, oh, which won't hold because I haven't got the bead bead on there. Um, but that's sort of going to sit there. Obviously, what you need to do um, first um, is make the, the cage to kind of hold it. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do that before you put all of this together. So you're not having to worry about this sort of falling about. Okay. Um, so with the two um, pieces that are now sort of complete, um, what I then did, each one in turn, um, is just bent them upwards 
Um, obviously, I've got all four at this point in time. Um, and this is uh, where one of my friends sort of thought it looked a bit like an alien by the time I'd sort of finished. Um, but uh, this, um, so what I wanted to do uh, with with the wire that I've got the least amount of, obviously, um, <laughs> is um, to basically um, pull these two these two pieces together. I'll just sort of see if I can get them in a decent shape to, to show you where they're going. Um, so obviously you've got all, let's paint them out a little bit. Um, and I've got four wraps on there. Can't actually count today either. There we go, five, there we go. Um, been there for a while. Um, so what I've got then is, is those two just kind of coming round and what I'm going to do to hold it all together, um, whereas we've got two um, pairs here now, um, I want to get rid of, just sort of move them out of the way, um, the two outermost um, wires um, and then continue the same type of wrap um, with those two um, that are kind of the innermost wires of the, the, the four. The ones that are four counts. Yeah. So exactly the same wrap again, um, and you can choose at that point which um, wire you want um, it to go over. I think what I basically did, because I've got the barest wire um, on the right here, mm -hmm. um, I then wanted to have the barest wire on the left for these bits, just to Almost make it a, a bit different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so again, um, just keep kind of wrapping. <laughs> Having said that, I don't know which one's which now. Um, right, so actually um, that means that the um, the bare wire coming up of those two it remains the, the bare wire um, and just sort of do a couple of those um, so I haven't quite left enough wire on my, my sample um, which is just typical on that one um, but, so I'll just lock that in I'll show you how it's sort of building up from there um, as you can see there, it's just just beginning to, yep. to build. Um, actually, the count on this one was five wraps on the barest wire. Um, and then those two just literally, uh, if I turn it around that way, you can see it happening, um, just sort of turn. Um, you can chop a little bit of the, the wire off at the moment um, and they will turn in. Um, to create that kind of loop at the top um, and um, obviously these won't be in the way I um, did that after I put the, the gemstone in there um, but if I can just sort of switch to the um, to the one I've made I'll show you how I, I, I finished it off um, do you want to just um, pass it over I'll show you where I kind of went to um, so as you can see these are the, the the sort of the struts coming up popped the gemstone inside um, Obviously, uh, the uh, beady beads on the bottom um, with a head pin sort of going through. Um, I did make a little loop on the top because the head pin's just long enough, and um, that is the whole of the head pin. Okay. Um, once I'd got that together, I could then do exactly the same twist um, motion um, with the, the, the struts as I, I did on the, um, the single wrap, single. just to get them twisted. Um, you might then want to go in and just sort of tidy some of them up. One of them might have twisted slightly more than another, just because of where your oh, sorry, just because of where your fingers are. Um, so you can just kind of you know work around them and, and, and figure those out. Um, then I turned the um, the ends over. Um, popped a couple of the beads inside um, where the ends of those wires now are just yeah. to hide them and, and fill it out a little bit more yeah. um, and then carried on with a few more beads and just wrapped around what was left of the head pin at the top there um, and that is just the, the whole piece kind of finished so it looks really intricate but it's one one type of weave um, a fair number of wires but not unmanageable they're, they're kind of they're quite separate for an awful lot of the time um, and, and just that kind of twist motion to uh, to create the effect. That is so wonderful and really easy to create and not that time consuming actually because no. there's not loads of different techniques. No, no. Um, I mean, because I was um, pushed push for time, actually the, um, the staging for this I did um, in, I think it was about 10, 10 minutes. Um, just getting those wraps, um, those wraps done, um, and I've just noticed I did actually manage to do a beady bead again because there's one. You've done another one. At the back. <laughs> 
I've got a message in for you. It says, hi girls, hello Bernadette. Thanks for messaging today. May I just say today's designs are just beautiful and I am going to give them a go. Keep up the great work. Watching from Ireland. Oh good, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you like them and um, I'd be really interested to, to hear how you get on with them. They're beautiful, aren't they? Thank you very much, Bernadette. I'm going to leave you to your challenge. Okay. Because for the last mm, three and a half minutes, I need to do you a very quick bundle. Thank you very much for showing us that. How okay. is the challenge going? Um, it's going. It's going. It's going. That's important, <laughs> isn't it? I have got for you. <laughs> mm. It's me with my faves. Double strands, and it is so opalicious. 355 carats worth. Now, you have here your dendrite opal. Very unusual for us to have dendrite on. Really lucky to have it in the show today. 200 carats worth of dendrite. Now, dendrite's a really interesting gemstone because actually, Unlike most opal, it doesn't have colour play within it. Instead, these spheres that are built up with this silicon oxide have actually mixed in with other elements, and it gives you this gorgeous and monochrome mottled modern artefact. It's wonderful. 85 centimetre strands. You've also got 155 carats of your Australian opal. Again, 85 centimetre strands. Look at the amount you're getting. Double strands. Genuine opal, almost two meters worth. Maybe you loved the opal earlier, but you couldn't quite stretch to that price. Do not worry, do not fret. This is coming in low. I will say to you, let's do a trust thing. If you're happy, to buy two double strands. I say double, but our average length is 30 centimetres. So if this was double strand, it'd actually be 60 centimetres, wouldn't it? But this is 85, so it's not even double. So it's almost a triple, isn't it? If you're happy to get your hands on two double strands of opal for 10 pounds, it's imperative you get on the phone this instant. Our other opal that we had, it's coming back for you in a little bit. Um, this is going to be under a tenner. Your price for RCGC95. Get opalicious for just £7.95 for genuine opal. And how often do you get dendrite? Imagine this, I've got loads left over, but this is just as a little, um, a little tripled up quadruple link. Dendrite on gems, Dendrite Opal on gems, my wonderful director Ben has just told me, that on Gems TV, which he, he works on as well and he's worked there for many, many years, um, they do triple bracelets on there and you're looking at about 15, 20 pounds just for a quadruple, just for one. But you can do a five wrap loop with each of these. Seven pounds 95 is all you're paying. This is genuine opal. It used to be classed as bad luck, but as we've already said today, it is now totally the opposite. If you adore opal and you wanna get some in your stash at a cracking price, that is your chance today. And if we imagine that these are four strands, they're not, they're two doubles, but they're not doubles because uh, if they were double, they, it'd only be 60 centimetres, these are 85 centimetres. But let's be, you know, over the top and say they're just double strands. If you got four strands, oh my goodness, colour play, four strands, these would be £1.98. There it is. You're going to get so much more to eye. Greens, pinks, can you see? Colour play. And you're getting this 
both for £7.95 and that is it. After the break I have got some nuggety goodness for you as well as a top up on your earrings. Plenty of 95, plenty of gemstones and plenty of deals. See you after this.